Give the Lord a great big hand clap. You can be seated. Welcome to everybody all over the internet to New Day Christian Center. We're glad you are with us today. But I pray more than that, just watching us, I pray that you, as you watch these messages, you honestly, before the Lord, open up your heart and receive. Because I know when I speak, uh, years ago I stopped preparing messages. Uh, I just stopped. I didn't, you know, and there's nothing wrong with it. I'm not getting on any ministers at all. I'm not comparing myself among ourselves and becoming a fool. But, uh, and there's a time, I guess, there's a time when it's good to take a spiritual father's teaching and, and, and teach it. That's nothing wrong with that. But uh, several years ago, the Lord said, stop doing that, that I want to speak fresh manna into you. And uh, I want my people, they can, you know, you can watch anybody you want during the week, but God has fresh manna on, on the Sabbath day for you. And uh, that, that's fine. You know, go back to the wells, dip into that. I watch Brother Copeland all the time. I watch Brother Hagen all the time. Things that I've known, the foundations, you've got to keep the foundation clean and pure and strong or you'll crumble. You'll wander and you'll crumble. And I watch Brother Swaggart all the time. I got saved under Brother Swaggart. I don't care who likes it or not. Uh, that man has slain some, some of his own demons and, and giants, and I have the greatest, highest respect for him. He's touched the world, including Pastor T.C. And uh, we need this. The, why do you watch him? I, because I need the anointing of an evangelist on the, in these last hours. We all need to do the work of an evangelist if we really believe Jesus is coming. And that's what I want to share for a few minutes. I'm going to start right now. So open your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 1, please. There is something coming in, on, in uh, April 8th that has, by the, by the grace of God and by the Spirit of God, has the whole world's attention. Uh, the entire world, uh, you turn on the Internet and uh, everybody's talking about it. And they should be. All the uh, YouTube sites are talking about it. And they should be. Um, I remember several years ago, the Spirit of God spoke fresh manna to me and said, I'm coming quickly. I'm coming very soon. Start warning my people. Now, what God calls soon and what I call soon may be two different things, but in the, in the scope of eternity, uh, a year is a second. Uh, so he spoke that over five years ago to me while we were still in the uh, Vickery Meadow location. He said, tell the people I'm coming quickly. I'm coming very soon. Sooner than they think. And he said, if I parted the veil and let everybody see the timing of my return, they would quake in fear and they'd set their houses in order. Now, he said that to me five years ago. And five years ago, not that many people were talking about end times. There was always the end time ministries that that was their primary focus. But everybody else was talking about prosperity, whatever they wanted to talk about. But now you turn on YouTube and everybody's talking about the return of Jesus. Things that are happening. Mark, uh, Matthew 24, signs of, of the scriptures being fulfilled. And then just recently the Lord said, I want you to teach on Zechariah, Ezekiel, Psalms, and uh, uh, Daniel and Revelation so that the people know the season that they live in. Well, since we started that teaching, now everybody's talking about something, and rightfully so. It's extremely serious that we listen to this, take heed to this, and understand this is a supernatural event from heaven. And that is the solar eclipse of April 8th that's getting ready to come. I don't have time to go into the charts and the graphs, but it's, we just had seven years ago the solar eclipse that went, didn't touch any other nation. It only came across America. And it took uh, a path across America in a very specific and very supernatural direction. And the, and the, the cities that it covered, it covered seven cities called Salem across the United States. Now, seven years after that, 
you know, Daniel, uh, not Daniel, Joseph had a vision of seven good years and seven lean years. The good years were first. The first solar eclipse was Salem, Salem's peace to you. Listen, I love you, I love you. Seven cities of peace. God saying, my heart toward you is peace, come to me. Seven, exactly seven years later, now, the, the solar eclipse is passing seven cities named Nineveh. Now, that means nothing to you unless you understand the teaching of Jesus Christ and what that stands for. People wonder, how did, how did uh, Jonah walk into a city and the entire city immediately collapse and repent? From the king all the way down to the dogs were covered in sackcloth and repentance. How did that happen? Well, it happened, yes, because God anointed him to preach a message. But it was also supernatural, God, heaven-organized timing. And if you don't understand, that, that's why we're titling these messages, Where Are We At Now? You need to know where you're at now. What timing are you living in? What dispensation are you? If you're out of time, and that's what I've said about these other ministers, that I have not, I have not departed from word of faith. I have not departed from any of my foundational teachers, but you've got to change with the season. And the season now isn't about building your best house, getting your best life, getting your next financial increase. It's about winning the last of the souls because Jesus is at the door and we're going to give account for our lives. And I don't want to be stacking money and building my own kingdom when Jesus sounds the trumpet. I want to be in the right season, the season of laborers going out into the harvest field and winning the last of the lost that will hear. Amen. Amen. So I, the Spirit of God very specifically, and thank you, Daryl, for being so open. You know, uh, we're, we're staying in Daniel, but if he wants us to split it up and stay in Daniel, we'll do that. Uh, I, I didn't confer with Daryl, Pastor Daryl, and he's very generous and gracious. And I said, Let, give me 30 minutes and then I'll give you 45 minutes. He said, okay, that's fine, Pastor. So we're just going to do what God wants, okay? God spoke to me and said, you, you have got to get on the Internet and teach this and teach the people this quickly. Just give them an overview so it's in their heart and they run with it. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, we are, we are about to see a global visitation of God that is meant to shake the world to absolutely its core and bring nations to repentance. Amen. And if we don't prepare them, they won't recognize it and they won't repent and they'll be lost in their sins. But what's going to happen is a sign from God. It's a, it's a heavenly demonstration it is as supernatural as the book of Jonah, and if we don't get that, we'll just whistle right through it to our doom. Are you hearing me? Now, I'm speaking to the world, but I'm also speaking to comfortable, complacent, lazy, and different Christians. Hallelujah. Because I got news for you, before he started his journey, Jonah's heart was not into this stuff. God said, go, and he ran the other way. I can tell you something, if your heart goes the other way, your results from this time to the rapture are going to be the exact same thing as Jonah's. You're going to be cast into the deep. And you better believe this man of God. Because I am speaking by divine utterance, divine commission, and I am exactly on time with God. Now it's whether or not we're going to receive the day of visitation whether we're going to receive our instructions or whether we're going to run the opposite direction because we want none of it. We want our lives as it was before. Hallelujah. So open up with me, firstly, to Genesis chapter 1. When you get there, look at verse 14 with me. I'm only going to take a few minutes. Use your faith. I'm only going to take a few minutes. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, look at verse 14 with me. Say amen when you're there. Amen. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be. Now, this is where everybody, every, 
skirts right past us. The very first purpose of the stars and the planets and the solar system, and let them be for signs. Not just light, not just time, not just days. Their very first purpose, the very first commission of the stars and the planets and the solar systems is to be signs to mankind and to give signs to mankind. And that's not astrology, that's astronomy. The whole reason the, the wise men knew it is time to rise up and seek the Christ child is they saw the stars proclaim signs to them it is time to go. Amen. You've got to understand that. The very first purpose of all that you see at night, what, what did God use it for? Come out here, Abraham. Look at the stars. It's a sign of your future. Multitudes of children. When he wanted to give Abraham direction, he pointed him to the stars. When he wanted to give the wise men direction, they looked to the stars. He says the very first purpose of this out there is to be signs unto us. Not just, okay, well it's midnight now, and now it's April, and now it's May. That's the secondary purpose of it. The first purpose is that we read and God's talking to us through the lights in the heavens. Amen. Can you agree with that? Amen. Hallelujah. Now look over here at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21. Glory be to God forevermore. Say amen when you're there, precious people. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 21. I'd like for you to look at verse 24 with me, please. Luke 21, 24. And they shall fall. Jesus is talking about the same thing he, uh, that Matthew gave account to in Matthew 24. Amen? The end time, what? Signs. What do you do with a sign? You look at it. You recognize it. Oh, that's a stop sign. Oh, that, that's, a, that, that's a green light. That's a yield sign. If you can't read the signs, your life ends up a wreck. Now, we can do that in the natural, and Jesus even said that. You folks are experts. At when the sky's red, it's going to rain. When, when it's clear and, 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 and windy, it's going to be warm. You can read this natural season, but you haven't got a clue of the spiritual seasons that are giving you signs to understand. Amen. We know in the natural, you don't listen to the signs, you get in trouble. You'll get citations. You'll get your liberties revoked. Same thing in the spirit. You don't listen to spiritual signs. Your Christian liberties start getting revoked because you're violating kingdom laws. Come on. Hallelujah. So listen to what Jesus was saying. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captivity into all nations. That's talking about the fall of Israel, Jerusalem in 70 A.D. Okay, now that did take place, but this is progressing in times as he's given signs. Can I hear an amen? amen? And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's critical you understand that. From the moment the, the general moved into Jerusalem, tore the temple down, and took it over by Roman rule, Israel has always been under the foot of Gentiles until the end. Now, when's the time of the Gentiles? When is it completely fulfilled? We're still in the time of the Gentiles. The time of the Gentiles don't end until the rapture. And during the millennial reign, then it's the time of the Jews again, and the nation of Israel will be the capital of our king, and he sits his throne in Israel. Then the time of the Gentiles is over, and it's back to centered on the original covenant people, the Jews. Amen. Did you hear me? So the time of the Gentiles are not fulfilled yet. We're still in it. Amen? Amen? And there shall be signs. So that means that these signs are to what time? Not 70 A.D., but right now. Are you with me? Amen. Now watch closely. There shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations. That didn't happen in 70 A.D. 
Nobody else cared that Israel was taken over by the Romans. Hallelujah. You know, there was other countries in, his, in Germany and France, and, you know, we did, we, it doesn't name them, but there were other Arab countries all over the place. They weren't worried a bit. They weren't distressed over Italy coming against Israel. So we know that that verse doesn't apply to that time. We've progressed since then. Amen. Are you following me? There shall be signs of the sun and the moon and the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, say now please, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. That means disasters from the sea. Men's hearts failing them for fear and for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. That didn't apply to 70 AD. So this is all signs to us right here, right now. Amen? Amen. All right. So what great fear is going to start increasing. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We're going to see things here in the next few weeks even that's going to start shaking the globe. Trust me. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your Redeemer draws nigh. So what did he just say here? He said in the end times there's going to be signs in the heavens, the stars, the moon, the sun. Amen? So what he said in Genesis, Jesus turned right around and said again, in the end times I'm going to start demonstrating signs in the heavens. Is that correct? Is that, am, I, am I reading that right? Amen? So what he said in Genesis, what Jesus said while he's on earth, is applying to us right here and now. We're still instructed to learn from signs in the, in the heavens. These are supernatural manifestations of God talking to humanity. Now, how does he talk to us? Through the Word and through the Spirit. How does he talk to a heathen? Through signs and wonders. Hello. Now, remember, when God does something on, the, on Jewish calendar time or to the Jews, it's always through the moon. When God speaks to the heathens, it's always through the sun. Our calendar is on the solar timing. The Jewish calendar is on the lunar timing. So when there's a sign in the moon, he's talking to Jews. When the blood moons, predominantly for the Jews, even though what he does for the Jews affects the earth. Amen? When you see signs in heavens, solar eclipses, he's talking to the Gentiles. What's coming in April 8th? A solar eclipse that affects only, again, seven years after his peace offering, America. Now the peace offering's over, and the cities that it tracks straight across are Nineveh, 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 Nineveh. What was the message to Nineveh? Repent or you're going to all be wiped out. I'm telling you by the Spirit of God, He's trying to get America to wake up. And this April 8th demonstration in the sun is telling America, your time is up. Judgment now begins. You better repent. And the first ones that better hear it are the church. The first ones that better take heed to that are the Christians. And the first ones that better respond to that are the people of God and rise up out of their complacency, just like Jonah, and shake off their preference and shake off what they want and go preach that destruction is at the door to those that are lost without Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And you may not want to do that any more than Jonah wanted to do it. But I'm standing here under the prophetic utterance of Almighty God that if you don't rise up and obey, you will be cast into the deep in all the affairs of your life and it will not be well with you, saith the Lord. Well, I'm saved by grace. I didn't say you're going to die and go to hell. I said your life remaining here is going to turn to hell. And you won't get redeemed from that. You will not get vomited out of that until you cry out from the deep and repent to God. Because let us remember, what was Jonah? 
Jonah was a covenant Jew. He had a covenant just like you got a covenant. Yes, his was by the law, but it was still law, obeying the law brought the grace of God into your life. Disobeying the law brought judgment into your life. And if we don't wake up and have compassion to obey God and go to the heathen, when this sign takes place, we will reap problems. Now look over here at Matthew 12. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, once again, folks, there's, there's absolutely no condemnation in that. Your, your self-identification will either put you in condemnation or put you in rejoicing. You decide where you're at on that message, not Pastor TC. I'm not beating anybody up. I'm not attacking anybody. I'm telling you, you can be happy about this or you can be sad about it just like Jonah was. And you can push your own way and push your own way and push your own way until everybody around you wants nothing to do with you because they see nothing but the judgment of God on your unrepented hearts. The people on the ship with Jonah did not want to throw him overboard. He finally had to say, if you guys want to live, you better throw me overboard. We don't want to be guilty before God, but his rebellion forced a separation from the people that should have been happy with him. Where did I say turn? Look at verse uh, 39 with me, please. I think. I might have wrote that down wrong. Matthew 12. That's why I don't look right. I'm in Matthew 6. Matthew 12, 30. Let's start with 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from you. Now, this is critical. This is critical. Jesus said it, well, let's just read it. But he answered and said to them, an evil, say that with me. Evil. Say it again. An evil, an adulterous generation seeks after a sign. When God's always got to prove himself to you, you're displaying your heart as evil and adulterous. If you don't prove yourself, i got something else lined up to serve. Starting with myself. It means you have an evil and adulterous heart. I'll just as quickly divorce you, God, if you don't do what I want, and go whoring after this. Hallelujah. An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and there shall be no sign given to them but the sign of the prophet Jonah. There you go. Now, if the exact same, well, glory to God. Listen to this. No, but there shall be no sign given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For Jonah was three days. Now, everybody thinks this is just talking about uh, Jesus being crucified, buried, and resurrected in three days. Yes, it's applying to that, but that's not all it's covering. Amen. Are we an evil and adulterous generation? Yeah, we are. We sure are. America is, 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 is a whorish nation, full of all manner of evil. And if you think America's right with God, you need to go repent. America's killing more innocent babies than any nation in the world. Got more pornography than any nation in the world. Got the higher divorce rate of any nation in the world. Got more alcoholism than almost any nation in the world. Uh, and we stand here and say God loves America. God loves people that love Him. God loves the sinner, but they need to get saved. His blessings are not on them other than the blessing of an extended hand. Come and repent, and I will save you. Amen. Hallelujah. We have whored after other things and left our first love of God years ago. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men, now here's the part that applies to us. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment against this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching 
of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Now what you don't understand about the prophet Jonah is, one, he was rebellious. Two, he had no love for the Ninevites. Three, the Ninevites had just conquered and raided Israel some 50 years before that and slaughtered and raped and pillaged. Are you listening to me? So you're looking at this world and say they're vile, they're aggressive, they're hurtful, they'll victimize me. You're in the same shoes as Jonah. And rightfully so, he had a right to resent them. Rightfully so, we, 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 we guard ourselves against the vileness and the, and the violence of the world. But in doing that, we begin to build our own kingdoms, and we will not leave that kingdom to obey God anymore. Come on. And we'll stay in here and listen to prosperity and my best left life now, behind our little walls, building our little projects, pursuing our personal kingdoms, and with no vision of those people that are violent and aggressive anymore. Come on, brother. But what you don't understand in Jonah's time was Jonah's, uh, the wise men of Nineveh knew to study the stars, just as sure as the Magi did. And their stars told them that there was a, 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 an eclipse coming. And an eclipse always meant severe judgment. And on the very day, the whale vomited Jonah out on the banks of Nineveh. And he walked into the gates. It was the very day and hour the eclipse took place. So their hearts were already primed that judgment might be coming. And then this guy from the foreign land that that is just raided, pillaged, and plundered shows up at their gates and say, God loves you, but if you don't repent today, you're all going to die. They already saw the signs of the time. They already knew the solar eclipse was coming. They didn't know that God's man was coming at the same time. And when he spoke, they already had his attention. It is absolutely God's grace that every YouTube channel is blazing news about this eclipse coming April 8th. What is that? A little over two weeks away? What are you doing right now? What are you focusing on right now? What are you praying for right now? Are you discerning that this is heaven showing us judgment is coming on America? When you see it, will you think, wow, that looks cool, and how neat is that? And we won't see that for another hundred years. Or are you discerning, heaven is speaking. And will God's people get vomited out of their self-righteous, self-protected, all about me little putrid words and worlds, and get vomited out of that stuff in time to say, thus saith the Lord, and repent of their selfishness. God's preaching from heaven, April 8th. You better believe it. Will God be able to preach through you? Or will you still be deeper in the well's belly than ever before? I'm talking to people all over the Internet. Are you going to rise up and cooperate with God's supernatural sign from heaven? Or are you just going to bury yourself deeper in the well's belly? Hallelujah. Look at Matthew 24, 32, please, and we'll close. Matthew 24, 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree, which when the branch is tender and putteth forth leaves, you know that summer is near. Now what's he talking about? Discerning seasons. Say it with me. Understanding seasons. The fig tree is talking about its season to produce fruit. It's not talking about a day or an hour. 
So get this filthy deception out of your ears, body of Christ, all over America. Stop parroting hell and say, well, nobody knows the day or hour. He started the teaching by saying, only a fool doesn't know how to discern the season he's living in. He's not talking about the day or hour. He's trying to tell you, you better know the season you're in. And we are in the season of the coming judgment of Almighty God on this nation. As sure as I'm standing here. Learn the parable of the fig tree. When the branches are yet tender and putteth forth leaves, you know. What? The hour. No. You know the day. No. You know the summer is near. You know the season. So likewise, when you shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Where is Jesus right now, child of God? At the door. He's literally turning the doorknob to come and call his people home. But before that, he's given a supernatural visitation to mankind in America. You better, this is your last call to repent. And if you don't, you're as good as dead. And don't you think for a minute grace stops that. Jesus is telling us right here. He told us about Jonah. He's telling us about the fig tree. What's it take for us to wake up? So likewise you. He's point, my, my footnotes here say he's pointing to the modern church. Thank you. I'm not the only one that believes this. So likewise ye, when you see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? Are you ready for that? Are you truly? Because remember the parable of the talents. We will all have a day of accountability. What did you do with your life? 34, verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away. The generation, what generation? Right here, right now. Shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of the day and of the hour knoweth no man, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as of the days of Noah... So shall be the coming of the Son of Man. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Now he just gave two different warnings, three different examples, Jonah, the fig tree, and Noah. And most people aren't going to hear this. Most people go to work, marry their kids, marry each other, invest in their IRAs, apply for their next promotion, invest in their bank accounts, build their best life now, and refuse to pay attention to the supernatural visitations of God that are coming in disguise to get our attention and call this nation to repentance. And it won't have the effect if the Jonas of America don't rise up out of their self-induced comas and go out at the same time and start preaching repentance unto salvation to a lost heathen world in America. Amen. Now we have been warned. Amen. I have warned America to the best of this man's ability. I am telling you this is a supernatural pre- proclaimed, scripturally based sign from heaven. And this time, every place it tracks its trail is Nineveh. 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 Seven times Nineveh. What's that mean? Not only is judgment coming, but it is absolutely divine certain that is coming. What should we be doing? We should be repenting and preparing to preach. Repenting and prepare to preach. Repent and prepare to herald, proclaim, share, and prophesy 
at any place, at any time, to anyone that we have a 10-second opportunity to. And yes, they will mock, and yes, they will ridicule, just exactly like they did in the days of Noah. The days of Noah is he built and prepared and preached for 120 years, and nobody repented. That's not what you got to worry about. you got to worry about, are you going to stay in the belly of the whale? Or are you going to hear a well done from God for rising up and preaching to people you don't like, love, or care about? He didn't say you've got to have a want to. He didn't say you've got to fall in love with him. He said, obey and preach for me. Amen. Now, Father, I just ask you right now in Jesus' name that these words that have gone forth as you have unctioned me and stirred me go forth with the power of the Holy Spirit to convict and repent in all the hearers. And not just that, but a tangible, glorious presence to energize, raise up, empower, and prepare preachers and proclaimers of the good news of Jesus Christ to people that are unlovely, the people that are harsh and horrible in their conduct, the people that are rash and, and aggressive against them, but yet give them the backbone of, of a Holy Ghost man and woman that like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego can walk through the fire with Jesus and come out whole when the rapture sounds. In Jesus' name I pray, Father, and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap as Pastor Darrell comes. Thank you, man of God. Hallelujah. I'm on. You're always on. Get the microphone on. We're always turning. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we thank you for the word that we've heard already. And Father, we thank you for the word we're going to hear next. Yes. And Father, I thank you that, that uh, your word is true and that, uh, praise God, the Holy Spirit moves, opens ears and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all can turn to Daniel chapter 1. I got to verse 4. Amen. Amen. This is a, it's kind of amazing to me. I want to show you something here. And we are going to get to the, to the dreams and the visions and the interpretations, folks. I promise you. may not be today, but we're going to get there. Uh, those things are very important, but I think there's so much in the book of Daniel. And we're talking about the end times. If we don't understand what the Bible is teaching in Daniel right here, you're going to miss everything he just said. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. All right, I want y'all to look in, in verse 4 of chapter 1, and we'll go ahead and get started. It says, Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such as had ability in them to stand in the king's palace, in whom they might teach the learning in the tongue of the Chaldeans. The thing I want you to look at there is science, that word science. Uh, I'm going to read a definition to you out of the, the dictionary. Just for our science, the word that we, we call science, the, de the definition of the, is the systematic of, of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation, experimentation, and the testing of theories against the evidence obtained. So that's looking at natural things to see what's happening. You saw we can see this we can see the things in the the sky. We can tell when the sun comes up it's daytime. And the science that we live, they we got medicine, we got vehicles, and, and all that stuff is a good knowledge. Okay? But I'm gonna submit to you, I looked it up, and that word science is in two places in the King James Version of the Bible. The New King James calls it knowledge. Uh, but the King James, the one that we read out, I read out of here, it says science. 
It is right here, and it's also in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. And y'all can go and look at that, and they translate it in, in the Greek as knowledge. But in the Hebrew, in the Hebrew, it says intelligence, knowledge, or consciousness. And that's, that impresses me because consciousness is being awake where you can see natural things. And our science teaches us natural things. I submit to you that, that what they're looking for that has a that are people, people that are have a consciousness of the unseen realm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Of the unseen realm. Hebrews chapter 11 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, and you can tell but that they have they have uh, uh, Astrologers, they uh, have, uh, uh, well, I just lost it. They have uh, magicians, astrologers, and sorcerers, and Chaldeans. So we got all these people in there. I'm going to tell you, you know, the people back then in Daniel's time, in that period of time, everybody was aware of God's. Amen. So they were looking for people that had the consciousness of how to tap into them. That's still going on today, by the way. We run around here, people run around here, don't believe God at all. Don't believe God, don't believe in spirits, don't believe in angels, don't believe in anything. They are full of science, as we understand science. Are you listening to me? Yes, that's, that's exactly what... Paul called it to Timothy. He said, what y'all call knowledge, science. Yeah. Okay. But if we don't understand that, folks, you're going to miss God. Because, did you not hear what he just said? It, how it ties all that together. If you don't know what the Word says, if you don't know what the spiritual meanings of these things are, it's going to go right over your head, and you're going to wake up one morning and wonder about this deep. Amen? But I wanted to show you that because that word science, it just stood out to me. And it's not been two places in the King James Bible. So it's not, it's not talking about the same knowledge that it says in the, in the very same verse and cunning in knowledge. You see what I'm saying? It says, In the children was, whom was no blemish but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning in knowledge and understanding science, which is another knowledge. That's the thing I want you to understand and see. Okay, turn to John chapter 4. The Gospel of. I'm going to show you something. Everybody, I know we know this in this church. But I'm telling you, there's people that don't understand and know these things. And there's people in the church that don't know and understand these things. Amen. Y'all found chapter John chapter 4? Verse 23. Y'all listening? Amen. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers, true worshipers of God, of the Father in spirit and in truth. The true worshipers now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship Him. Verse 24. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen? We don't understand that in the body of Christ. We're still trying to worship God in our flesh. Amen? He wants spiritual people understanding spiritual things, so the spiritual God who we worship and praise and all that can use us to change the natural. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Only God can give me the wisdom and understanding to say the right words that will turn a per person's heart. Are you listening? Yes, sir. He's the only one that can do that. And it has to and you do it in prayer, by the way. You get it and you'll see it and you speak it and watch it happen. We hadn't got that. We're still trying to figure out what our plan for plan is. Amen. <laughs> 
Amen. So y'all right there, watch this. John 6, 63. I'm not going to take very long, praise God. Hallelujah. John 6. Verse 63, are y'all ready? It is the Spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen? The, God, the words that God speaks are spirit and they are life. There's going to be an eclipse in April the 8th. Thus saith the Lord. It's a sign. People need to understand what it is. What you just talked about. The sign. Amen? Amen. And it's, it's going to happen. God speaks in, through natural things. But He wants us to understand the spiritual significance of it. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? And that's why it's written. And the words that He writes is true. Their spirit and their truth. People will not get in the Word, find out what it says, and, and wander around and wonder what the truth is. Jesus and God's Word which is written in the book, is truth. Amen. And if you don't understand that, you're missing God. You can't not know what the Word says and think you're living right. Amen? Amen. Now, I, I know that there's a, a moral thing that we have around. I, I, I'm, I'm reminded of Cornelius in the, in the book of Acts. He was, he was a good man. He was a, a Roman centurion, I believe. But he he had a he knew something he had a aware an awareness of a creator, and he had good moral standards and he he did his job as a soldier but he was good to the Jewish people and he give alms and he would stand and pray. Amen. And what I just amazes me about that at this time is because he prayed and God sent an angel to speak to him. He said. Call for Peter, and he'll come tell you what you need to do. Amen. Do you realize and know that there's people out there right now crying out to God that'll say, "Hey, if you'll get a hold of this guy, he'll come help you and tell you how to do it." Amen. But he can't do that if you're not available. Amen. Amen. There are people praying out to the living God, but they don't know how to access Him. Amen. But I'm reminded of that story because I know there's people out there. And I will say this, you know, you made a statement about Nineveh. Uh, praise God, Yarder. That's where uh, the, the Assyrians had went down there and picked all those people out and had the kings routed in Jerusalem. 186,000 soldiers surrounded Jerusalem. One angel one night killed them all. <laughs> they went back to Nineveh. But they had already taken like 30 cities and, and pillaged and all this stuff. Israel. And God wouldn't let them destroy the palace or the king for his own sake and David's sake. But Jonah did not like those people at all. You understand? But God. Amen. And you know what? Yes, but God. Amen. And the whole city repented. They didn't stay repented because it wasn't very long that Babylon took them over. Okay? I'm just saying that. But if we don't understand these spiritual things and see how God operates and functions, folks, we're going to miss God altogether. And I'm telling you right now, i got to get back in this but we're going to turn back over to Daniel we got to get serious with what God's talking about you want to know what God is and, and how he operates and how he functions uh, you're going to have to get serious about it you're going to have to get serious about it okay we read John 6 3 okay I want to go back to uh, Daniel chapter 1 I'm going to read verse we, talk, we covered this last week verse uh 20 and 21, Daniel 1. We talk about the difference between science. God wants people that can understand spiritual things. Amen. 
As a matter of fact, you're, if you're a Gentile, and we're all Gentiles, when you get born again, then you are born from above. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You have the ability to understand spiritual things. He has given us that ability. The reason why we don't is because we let the flesh dictate our thoughts and what we watch on TV and, and what we observe in the natural things is what controls us. But you have been given the Spirit of God. We should, Christians should be spiritually, watch this, verse 20, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king required of them, he found them ten times better than any of the magicians, astrologers, and were in all of his realms. We ought to be ten times better than, than these witch doctors and, and these magicians and these astrologers, astrology people that do the, you know, use horoscopes and all that stuff. We ought to be ten times better. Why? We have the Spirit of God in us. Most people don't understand that. Most people will tell you, well, I don't understand what the Bible's saying. Well, it's because you're not putting any forth effort or any forth effort or you might need to repent and receive Jesus because He give us His Holy Spirit. Amen? The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. And there's a lot of people out there that's got a lot of wisdom and understanding of natural things. If they wasn't that, you wouldn't be, you'd be walking everywhere you go. You'd probably live in a mud house somewhere, out on a prairie somewhere, in a teepee or something. But people understand how the natural world works, so they make things work, right? We have cars, automobiles, airplanes. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm telling you right now, spiritual understanding is far better than anything you can understand in the natural Amen? You know, Isaac Newton, bless his heart, discovered gravity. Right? That's what they said. I don't know if they discovered gravity. I, can, I know there's a, a, an account of a, of a prophet. Y'all know what gravity is, right? Tree, uh, <laughs> apple fell out of the tree and went to the ground. That, and he called it gravity. Woo! You know, big revelation. <laughs> there's, a, there's a story told about one of the prophets in there that a man lost his axe head in the water and he prayed and the axe head floated to the top I guess they call that anti-gravity <laughs> but that's God that's why it's important to know about spiritual things Jesus walked on water amen and I know I'm probably getting off of what y'all think I was going to, but this stuff is important to us. Well, it's, it's absolutely critical because what you're saying, Pastor Darrell, is that when the world and all their wisdom and all their design of all their mechanical marvels fail, the laws and wisdom of God override and have authority over no. what's fairly in front of us. Yes. Oh, and we, we need to settle it. Amen? And we should be ten times better than any of that wisdom of the world. Any of it. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. Okay, we went over this last week, some of this. And verse 11, it says, and it's a rare thing, because they asked the king, to, they, the king asked the, the magicians and the astrologers and all the wise men, and these guys are supposed to be spiritual. <laughs> huh? Amen? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something right here. Listen to me. These guys are supposed to have all this spiritual knowledge. Listen, they tried to get Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar to tell him what it was. So, they could give him an interpretation. Well, he didn't remember it all. Okay? And he told me, he said, no, I'm not, I don't remember it. And if you can't tell me what it is, he said, I know what you're doing. You're stalling. Okay? You're stalling so you want me to come up and give you a dream and then you're going to tell me what my dream means. That's what the world does. That's what Satan does. Listen to me. He can't. The devil cannot see in your heart. He can see what you tell him. Are you listening? 
and, and we, we'll get into that here in just a minute. The devil, the devil don't know what's in your heart. He can feed stuff into you and get you to say it. Now he knows what's, what he's putting in your ear and he start coming out of your mouth. Now he can function in that. Amen? Are y'all listening? That's serious business, folks. Okay. Verse 17. Daniel, he made this thing known about what was going to happen to them if they didn't, if they didn't interpret it to his friends. Amen? They was going to get going to get cut up. Their houses going to be dung hill and all that. And he went and prayed. Now verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night, in a night vision. Daniel had a dream. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. All right. Daniel said, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are His. Y'all need to underline that. That belongs to Him. Wisdom and might are His. And He changed, watch, the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. Amen? Verse 22, He revealeth the deep and secret things. Who does? God. God is who knows people's hearts. Amen? Not magicians. Not the devil. The devil only knows what you tell him. And you're usually going to tell him what he's already planted in you. And now he can manipulate you. God sees what's in your heart. Alright? He revealeth the deep and secret things. God reveals things to us. Amen? The hidden things. Especially in our own lives. Pastor was talking earlier about seeing things in the Spirit. Never called a name, never said anything. Amen? About anybody, he just made a statement. And, and y'all heard what he said. He said, God has showed me there's whispering going on. He didn't dream that up. And he didn't, agree, he didn't get real aggressive with it. He just told you. I saw that. Y'all, y'all take it at heart. Now you go pray about it, and you're probably going to find out that he's right. And if there's anything like that in your heart, you need to repent of it and get it out. Amen. Sometimes we can't see our own heart. Y'all with me? Amen. Verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwells with him. He sees the darkness in men but the light dwells with him. The light exposes the darkness. He said, I thank thee and I praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hath given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desire of thee, for thou hast now made known unto me, unto us the king's matter. So they went and prayed. Those four guys prayed. Pastor talks about praying all the time. You want, you want things to change, you're going to have to pray. If you don't like, like where you're at, start finding somebody that will come in agreement with you and pray. And God will reveal secrets that will change people's lives. And you do realize and understand that Daniel went to the Lord so that they wouldn't be killed with all the other magicians and wizards and all that stuff. He was, do, he was for self-perseverance or self-preservation. You ought to pray just, you know, so you don't get killed. You understand what I'm telling you? That's, and that's what we're talking about. There's stuff coming on the earth that you don't know nothing about. But God will show us what they are, and we can, do, we can cry out for mercy, and they'll show us how to get around things. You've got to be spiritually in tune with God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. That's what Daniel and, and 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were. They were in tune with Almighty God. They prayed. Daniel prayed three times a day. I'm sure the other boys did too. It was his custom that he set aside three times a day to pray. The Apostle Paul says, says for us to walk to pray all the time. Pray without ceasing. Amen? Well, how do you do that? Well, you stay in constant fellowship with the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God all the time in everything you do. Amen? Are you listening to me? They went and prayed and get on your knees before God. That's, or lay down, sit down, be still and know that I'm God. We all got stuff to do. I've talked to you all about this before. In my job, there's things I run across. God, I need some help here. And sit down a little bit and he'd say, okay, now go over and do this, 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 it'll work. Happens all the time to me. People think I'm crazy, but I'm not. And you know what I do? Well, thank you, Lord. And they think I'm crazy for standing on the ladder thanking the Lord Jesus for what I'm doing. <laughs> you, you understand that? We live in a time and we have been given something that God gave us to use. If we're not using it, we are less than what He wants us to be. And we are not productive in the kingdom of God. And He has given us those talents He has given them to us to benefit us to do His work. Amen? Praise the Lord. Alright. Now, the dream. Praise the Lord. Let me see if I can find the dream. I don't want to find a dream yet. I want you to turn over to verse 28 of chapter 2. We're on the line this again. It says, But there is a God in heaven that re revealeth secrets. Amen. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, that what, will, what shall be in the latter days. Can you underline latter days? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's given him a dream about what's going to happen in the latter days. This, and I told you all before, I told you last week, it's, a, it's actually a threefold uh, prophecy. Amen? Because it, it, part of it affects him then, part of it affects it a little bit later, and then, and then the thing affects us now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So if you're spiritually in tune with that you'll understand what I'm saying if you don't you'll have to go home and pray about it and get spiritually in tune with it you don't have to believe what I say go ask God amen, amen. amen. okay <clears throat> they dream I'm still in 28 and they, thy dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these as for the king or as for thee O king Thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed what should come to pass hereafter. There's people out here right now that are having dreams and ain't got a clue what they mean. That's right. That's right. And it bothers them. They can't sleep. They this reoccurring dream that keeps dreaming in their they're dreaming all the time. They don't know to go to God and they don't know anybody that they know that knows God well enough to understand it, to get the revelation of what the dream is for their benefit. People have dreams, reoccurring nightmares. That's exactly what he's ha what's happening to Nebuchadnezzar. He's had this dream, and it's frightening to him. He don't know what it is. He needs to know what it is. Amen. Amen? Now, I will say this. Christians, when they have a dream, they ought to be able to go to God, get the interpretation of it, and see whether it's for them and they need to change, or it's for prayer for somebody else. That's right. That's right. Amen? All right, verse 29, and bottom end of it. And he that revealeth secrets make known to thee what shall come to pass. Verse 30, now watch this. 
But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living. He didn't take credit for it. He said, it's not because I'm so smart and wise. Are you listening? He said, but as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any other living person. So it's not in his own wisdom. Amen. This is the point I'm trying to make. Amen? It's not because he's special. It's, not because, it's just because he, has, he, he is a man of purpose that knows the God that he serves. Amen? Amen. But for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of thy heart. So he's giving it to him, so they don't, everybody don't get their heads cut off. And it's not because I'm smarter than anybody else, it's because there's a God in heaven that knows the secrets. Amen? Amen? Are y'all with me? See, there's a lot of people in Christianity that flaunt some of this stuff and they get arrogant about it. And if it wasn't for me, you wouldn't know nothing. And that's absolutely wrong, folks. What they are is prophets for hire. Prophets for profit. And if you'll understand and know this, Daniel was a slave. The magicians they had there and the astrologers, they were on the king's payroll. Are you listening? They paid them good money to tell the king what he wanted to hear to give him spiritual understanding. Daniel was a slave. Now he got rewarded for it. But that was not, his being rewarded in money was not his motivation. His motivation was so that him and, his, and the four Hebrews or the Jews didn't get killed. There's a big difference. Amen? Hallelujah. Big difference. Praise the Lord. Okay. And, and then he's going to show the man his heart. Okay. Or what was in his heart. God's, God will give you secrets and dreams in your own life that will show you your heart. And I'm going to tell you something. If you'll get time and sit down and, and before God and actually pray, He'll show you Brett, while you're sitting there with your eyeballs wide open what's wrong in your heart. Amen. Why does he do that? So we can get it out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Verse 31. I'm just going to read this and then we'll go through the interpretation of it. It says, Thou, o King, sawest and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was ex excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image, this image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till, the, till a stone was cut out, of, cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet, that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. Then was the iron and the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like shaft of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. Okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit, but I want you to underline in, in verse 35, it says, and the 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 uh, stone that smote the image became a great mountain. And the reason why I want you to look at that and understand that it doesn't say it grew into a great mountain. It said it became like the like was. Are you with me? And we'll get into the interpretation, but I want you to understand that that it didn't grow into something. It became it. Okay. Because y'all understand here a little bit. Maybe I can get it across. All right. Uh, 
Verse 36, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for God, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. You need to understand that. Because if y'all read over in the prayer where God raises up kings, God puts down kings. Okay? And he told him, he said, Thou art king, and are a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. So I don't care how where you're at in your kingdom. That's what's wrong with the world today. We got all these people that's done all this stuff, and, and they built them a, a big whatever, and don't understand the only reason why they're, it's that way is because God allowed them to be. Amen. 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 He gave this king strength and glory. Amen. Now, I ain't got to it. We have to talk about. It. We're going to talk about other gods just a little bit because we talk. Okay. God raises them up. God puts them down. Kings, kingdoms. Do you understand that there's man right now? Uh, and I'm just going to use athletes. And we all worship something, don't we? Besides God. You have these athletes that get raised up and they're all on pedestals. And they, say, and, and they call them the goats. Greatest of all time. And they fight and struggle over which one's up there on the top, which one's the greatest and all this stuff. They, they don't understand and know the only reason why they got there is because God let them get there. They never give God the glory for it, but they definitely draw off a of man and, they, and people pour money into them. Pour money into them and try to be like them. Do you understand what I just said? We say we don't worship gods. America is full of idols. Amen? Amen? Okay, I'll, I'll leave that alone for right now. We'll get back into it in a minute. <laughs> Verse 38, And wheresoever the children of men will dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given unto thine hand and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So the head's gold, but this kingdom, Babylonian kingdom, God give it to him to serve God's purpose. Y'all need to understand that. Amen. They went down there and wiped Jerusalem out because they was acting goofy, took them captive, and then God brought the light and started teaching Nebuchadnezzar about God. Y'all with me? That's good news to me. Alright? And after thee, thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth, and the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, as for as for, as for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and do all things, and as the as and as that breaketh all things shall it break in pieces and bruise. You need to underline that bruise right there, and right out there beside of it, Genesis three fifteen. And when you go over and read Genesis three fifteen, what you're going to read is you will bruise his head and he'll bruise your heel. You with me? That's <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and whereas thou sawest the feet and the toes, part of pottery's clay and part of iron, and the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. I'm not going to get into all that. There's a lot of stuff there I don't want to get into right now. And as the do toes and the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. I'm not going to get into that right now. There's a lot there. You might want to underline it. <laughs> huh? Yeah. But they shall not cleave to one another even as the iron is mixed with clay. Verse 44. I want you to underline this. Underline this. Underline this. And watch this. And in the days of these kings, what kings? The kings that we're talking about. Okay? And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. 
Are you listening? In the days of these kings, not the ones we're talking about now, in the days of these kings, God's going to set up a kingdom. Okay? <laughs> Which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Y'all know what kingdom that's talking about? That's talking about the kingdom of God. All right, now watch this. He says, he, he said, and it shall not be left to other people. He started with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he's going to finish with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob sitting on the throne, named Jesus. And God's going to do it. He's not leaving it to other people. Amen. Are you listening? Amen. What God do we serve? The God of Abraham? Isaac and Jacob, Jehovah, the self-existent God, the great I Am. His name is Jesus. His name is Jehovah. His name is Holy Ghost. Amen. And He's going to set it up with these kings that are in these kingdoms in this poor period of time. Amen. All right. Verse 45, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. Amen. So it's going to happen. It's happened. It's happening. Amen. It, it's going to happen. God said, it. Now y'all do realize that the, the, the stone that was cut out of the mountain without hands, that is Jesus himself. And look, here we got four kingdoms that we're looking at. Actually, you got five. Started with the Persian kingdom, Nineveh. Nineveh was part of the Persian Empire. No, I take that back. What, what, they were Assyrians. The Assyrian Empire. All right, we got the Babylonian Empire. They were talking about Nebuchadnezzar. Number two, you got the Persian Empire. They come in and uh, they have the, the silver in two arms. Is there's two rulers because they're Mede, half Mede and half Persian. Darius and Cyrus. They were one was Mede, and the other was, but they were part of the Persian Empire. Amen. Then you got the Greek Empire, and then you have the Roman Empire. Okay, Babylon worshipped Baal, Marduk. They had all kinds of little idols and stuff. They did not worship the true God. All right? The Persians were Zoroastrians. Okay, that's what they worshipped. I don't, I, I don't know if y'all know anything about the Zoroastrian Religion, I don't want to know anything about it. They're dualists. They believe you're half good and half bad. Okay, so I don't, I mean, they're weird. Uh, and then you have the Greek Empire. They were Zeus and Hercules and all them was. Alexander the Great, he worshipped Hercules. Hercules was his hero. And then you got the Roman Empire, which is the legs, the iron, and they forcefully took over Europe. I mean, they were a ma machine, right? Well, they worshipped Jupiter and Mars, and they had all these different gods, all natural gods. And God, inside of all those kingdoms with all those different gods, set up a kingdom anyway. Amen? And on 30 A.D., 30 A.D., when Jesus was crucified, God laid the foundation or the cornerstone. His name's Jesus. Are you with me? He laid the cornerstone. It took him from all this time working with the Israelite people. People who, do, who don't like Israelites, you need to repent, folks. That's how God got himself into the earth. But Jesus was the first... It's the cornerstone. And the Bible says if you, fall on the, if you fall on that rock, it will break you. If it falls on you, it will 
grind you to powder. Are you listening? Isn't that good? Isn't that good? And we need, we need to understand what all these different religions that's gone on in the world in that God set up a kingdom that you can know is sure and it will not fail and it's going to be forever. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's good news to me. Amen? Now, I want to show you this in verse 47. Hallelujah. Am I making any sense? Amen. Not born, Yama. Not too bad. Verse 47, it says, The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. I want you to look at that right there. That is what he what this come out of Nebuchadnezzar's mouth. And he just showed you the Trinity. He is God of gods, Lord of kings, and revealer of secrets. The Holy Spirit. God is my Father. I heard this the other day. I was talking to a couple of young guys. He said it to me and it just really went off in my spirit. I, I honor my Father. I serve my King. I yield to the Holy Spirit so they can talk through me. You see that? And that is that right there out of Nebuchadnezzar's mouth alludes to the Holy Trinity. Amen? And that's good to me. But do y'all understand what I just said? That was good to me. I honor my Father. I serve my King. I yield to the Holy Ghost so He can flow through me. That's the way we're supposed to operate. That's the way, the, that's the way Christians should operate. Amen? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of good stuff in that. I honor my Father, I serve my King. I yield to the Holy Spirit so it can flow through me. We need to understand and know that. There's something else going on in my head right now. Y'all just have to forgive me. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's what we're talking about. But there's people out here in the, in, on the YouTube that don't know Jesus, know nothing about Him. And I'm trying to explain something to them that, that the God that I talk about, the Father that I talk about, the, the King that I talk about, the Savior, is true. His Spirit, His Word is true. You have questions. And He tells you, He said, He said, if you'll just come to Me, I will show you things you do not know. If you'll come to me, your life will be a, there will be things happening in your life that you won't believe. If we will understand and come to him that he is a good and kind and gentle God, he will in no wise cast you out, but he will show you who he is. He will lift you up and cause you to be a living being. There's things about the Lord that we need to get to people because they don't understand because they're listening to all the noise. There's a lot of noise. God wants us to know. Do you know all these kingdoms, all these gods that they served, they had magicians and, and all these different people trying to figure out what the gods wanted because they didn't know their God. God said, I want you to know me in a very intimate passionate way he said I know the plans that I have for you and they are good and not evil but if you're fooling around and all this nonsense out there the only thing I can tell you that it's out there there's a lot of noise out there there's evil out there but God will bring you peace in your life he'll bring you 
peace in your life. And this goes for the body of Christ. If you'll quit listening to all the nonsense and the noise that they're having in these churches and come to the Word of God and listen to the Word of God and, and read the Word of God and understand the Word of God the way the Word is written and what it understands, and won't you to, the way you need to understand it, there will be peace in your life. Amen. You'll be a committed person to the Almighty God. Most people don't never open their Bibles and study anything. If they do, they, get, they look at John 3.16 until they got it memorized. That is a very good passage of scriptures to memorize, but there's a lot more God than just being saved. And that is the, the premier thing. That is what we need. But we don't know that we should honor our Father, serve our King, and allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. Nebuchadnezzar couldn't do it. Amen. The, the Syrian, the Persian guys couldn't do it. Alexander the Great, he was running around like Hercules. He thought he was Hercules. That was his hero. Took out everything. Amen. But if you're not born again, you're not going to get it anyway. But if you are, all things are possible. And I implore you by the in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ out there on YouTube, if you're listening to my voice, Jesus said this. He said, no one comes to the Father unless they come through me. I'm going to get rid of all your gods. I'm going to, I'm going to make it very simple. That's exactly what God did. He said, I'm going to make it simple. I am the true God. Amen. He said, no, And Jesus said, he said, no one comes to the Father except they come by me. And and no one comes to me unless the Father draws them. And if you're listening to my voice right now, God's drawing you to Jesus. I recommend that you submit to Jesus, that you cry out to Him. Repent of your ways just, and cry out to Him. I need Jesus and let Him come into your life, folks. Because without it, I read it, this kingdom that God set up, there's coming a time when every bit of it's going to be absolutely destroyed off this earth. It'll be, it'll be shaft in the wind. All this stuff that people's believed and these different gods that they believed in, and all, all that stuff's going away. And you're either in the kingdom of darkness or the kingdom of light. And this world has taught you that there's a lot of gray area. There's absolutely no gray area between God and God and the devil between light and darkness no gray area whatsoever and I'm telling you the truth that Jesus is the only way so in the name of Jesus I ask that you do that you receive him as your savior you fall in love with him he is the life giver and father I just thank you and I praise you as people listen to this and their hearts will be changed. That they will turn their hearts over to the living God. That He is true. He's made it very simple. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to worry. Because of who, who you are and who, what Jesus did for us. And I thank you for that, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pastor. Thank you, Lord. Are you ready to give the Lord your love gifts and your offerings? Hallelujah. And remember, Jesus is Lord. Try it again. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. And God loves Garland. Amen. God bless.